Okay, so uh, I would like to thank the organizers for this nice opportunity to uh, present my work here. Um, so my uh, talk will be a bit short, I guess. Uh, this, is uh, this is a joint work with Vladimir Wolf uh, from Royal Hallway. And uh, today we'll talk about efficiency of uh, conformalized ridge regression. Uh, so, the main disadvantage of Bayesian statistics is that it's difficult to specify prior. Uh, and uh, what if uh, the prior is wrong or what if the model is wrong? And uh, the Bayesian conclusions can become very misleading. So, uh, in order to prevent, uh, overcome these difficulties in this talk, I will uh, uh, tell you how to make Bayesian conclusions more robust in some sense, uh, in particular how to conformalize these conclusions and uh, how much uh, do we have to pay for this. Uh, and uh, in my work uh, there will be two assumptions. One is hard, another is soft. The hard assumption is that uh, the, validity, uh, uh, on, uh, the validity of our conclusions depend on uh, the hard assumptions and the uh, soft assumptions, um, uh, the validity of our conclusions, uh, well, in fact, are not affected uh, on these assumptions, even uh, though if the, these assumptions are violated. Uh, the hard assumption is that the data is IID. Uh, well, it's rather... Uh, common assumption, but uh, nevertheless it's uh, not always the case. And the soft assumption is Bayesian assumption. Uh, uh, we will talk only about Bayesian ridge regression, although the analogous results is already derived for uh, Bayesian kernel ridge regression and some other uh, algorithms. I will talk about that later. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to tell you about the simple model uh, for which we uh, uh, explore uh, statistical properties of conformalization. Uh, we consider a simple linear regression uh, with uh, Gaussian noise. Uh, uh, observations are generated independently and uh, uh, according to Bayesian assumption the weight vector W it's uh, the prior also is normal. A uh, plays the role of uh, regularization parameter. And uh, uh, the conditional distribution of uh, uh, the output value, uh, given uh, some new input value, uh, and the training sequence, as you know, is normal as well. Yeah? And uh, the uh, posterior mean value of uh, this output equals uh, to this guy. Very well known formula, I guess. Uh, and uh, this is posterior variance. This is posterior variance and uh, j, uh, j sub n is uh, it's, it's just a factor which uh, uh, is needed to calculate this posterior variance. Okay, uh, x by x capital we denote the design matrix for the training sequence and uh, y capital is the vector of the training labels. So as you know the Bayesian, uh, uh, the Bayesian uh, prediction interval looks like this. And in case the Bayesian assumptions are valid, this is the uh, most efficient, uh, optimal uh, prediction interval. Uh, here uh, Z sub uh, epsilon over 2, it's uh, uh, quantiles of uh, uh, normal distribution, of standard normal distribution. Okay, this is the model we will, uh, uh, we will deal with. And uh, now I would like to tell you about what is conformalized ridge regression. The idea is the following. Uh, first of all, we have to define a so-called conformity measure, uh, which maps A, which maps any finite sequence of observations to the sequence uh, alpha 1 sub n, alpha, uh, alpha, 1, alpha sub 1, alpha sub n of uh, conformity scores. Uh, I will, uh, so, conform... Uh, uh, First of all, uh, as a conformity measure, we, uh, th there are different def uh, definitions of conformity measure, measures. Uh, uh, it's uh, a main, uh, the main thing is that uh, the conformity measure uh, shows uh, uh, to which degree the considered element conforms to the full sequence. 
So in our case, there's a conform, uh, we can calculate conformity measure as follows. First of all, uh, for each uh, value, uh, for each uh, point from uh, learning sequence, we calculate uh, the prediction for this point and then calculate uh, the residuals. And then we uh, calculate the number of points from the training sample such that uh, its prediction residuals are bigger or smaller than the residuals of the uh, considered points uh, from the training sample. And uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, by this we calculate conformity score for this uh, considered uh, observation. And then we do, the, to do this procedure for each uh, observation from the training sample. And uh, by this we calculate a sequence of conformity scores. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Well, in some sense, it's, uh, uh, well, here, in fact, when we calculate this prediction, uh, this prediction, we uh, uh, use uh, the uh, observation, uh, east observation as well. But we can use leave one out here, uh, the results will be the same, but uh, technically it's, uh, they're more difficult. Uh, so for simplicity, I uh, don't use leave one out here, but it can be used as well. Uh, so. Uh, why we need these conformity scores? The idea is uh, the following. Uh, assume that we, uh, we are given at some significance level, a training sequence uh, containing n minus 1 observations, and some test object x sub n, and uh, uh, CRR, conformalized ridge regression, outputs the prediction set, which can be calculated as follows. Uh, this prediction set contains all possible output values such that the p-value is greater than the given uh, significance level epsilon. This p-value is calculated as the number of uh, as the number of uh, score of conformity scores uh, 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 less than uh, the conformity score for the uh, last observation for which we don't know the output but want to make a prediction. Uh, assuming that this last observation has as output uh, this value y. So we assume. Let's assume that the output has, uh, for the unknown uh, observation, has the value y. Then uh, we can calculate uh, predict, uh, conformity score for this uh, the last observation for which we are making prediction and then calculate the proportion of uh, data points for which uh, these conformity scores turn, uh, turns out to be greater than conformity scores for other observations. And then we uh, select from uh, the uh, from uh, uh, the set of all possible uh, uh, label values. We uh, select all those output uh, labels uh, label values such that this uh, inequality is fulfilled. And this set of output label values uh, uh, is a prediction set, uh, non-parametric prediction set uh, uh, constructed by CRR uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, and in fact, it could be proved that uh, although uh, the set of possible Y labels uh, here, it is uh, infinite, then uh, due to uh, its uh, specific structure of this procedure, the prediction interval, interval uh, obtained through this procedure, in fact, it's, uh, it's really interval. And uh, uh, we, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a procedure such that uh, the left end and the right end of this interval can be efficiently calculated uh, with uh, complexity equal to n log n, where n, n is a sample size. So that means that for any new observation uh, given a training sequence, we, we can calculate non-parametric prediction interval. And of course, <laughs> we would like to ask ourselves whether this prediction interval is good or not. Uh, it could be proved that if uh, uh, the training sequence is uh, IID, this is the hard assumption, in fact, then the probability that uh, the given algorithm makes an error that is, its prediction set fails to include the real observation output. Uh, this uh, probability doesn't exceed the given uh, 
uh, threshold, uh, the given probability epsilon. In the on-light prediction protocol, the long-run frequency of the errors also doesn't exceed uh, almost surely this given uh, probability epsilon. So, this property is validity. This, uh, that means that uh, this uh, CRR conformalized risk regression procedure is valid in the sense that its uh, probability of uh, uh, not uh, obtaining right prediction interval, this probability is uh, not higher than a given uh, threshold value. But uh, although validity is achieved automatically, uh, uh, we also need efficiency. Efficiency in the sense that the prediction interval shouldn't be big. Uh, and uh, 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 opposed to uh, the uh, described procedure, Bayesian risk regression uh, uh, prediction intervals are not valid. They are, uh, in general, they are valid only if the postulated probability model is correct. In fact, it's a well-known example of Larry Wasserman from Statistical Science uh, that if uh, we uh, generate small number of observations using, uh, using uh, uh, Bayesian model uh, we uh, described, uh, we consider Bayesian model without uh, regr regressors. So, uh, prediction intervals obtained by CRR uh, procedure, uh, they, are always, they always uh, contain uh, these observations, so they are always valid, uh, opposed to the Bayesian uh, confidence interval, which can fail, if the Bayesian uh, uh, assumptions, if the model isn't correct. Uh, but uh, uh, what happens in terms of efficiency? Uh, uh, is uh, the prediction intervals obtained through conformalization is efficient in the sense that if the Bayesian assumptions are valid, whether we will uh, give uh, prediction intervals almost as uh, uh, efficient as uh, in Bayesian case. And, uh, well, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, explore this question. Um, we need some uh, assumptions for this. We assume that uh, we have an infinite sequence of observations, so uh, we get observations in online mode. Uh, uh, we consider only the first uh, n uh, of these observations, uh, so um, uh, features are p-dimensional. Uh, feature um, covariance matrix exists and is non-singular. Uh, vector of uh, weights is independent of observation of uh, labels of uh, input uh, vectors, and in fact we don't uh, assume that this uh, uh, vector uh, should be uh, uh, should have a prior uh, normal distribution. Uh, we assume that our uh, outputs are generated according to this model, where the noise is normal and uh, independent, uh, and all. Uh, uh, random variables here are independent between themselves and of uh, uh, observations. Okay, so we can prove the following uh, theorem. It could be proved that uh, the, uh, the, the difference between the left ends and right ends of the Bayesian uh, prediction interval and of the prediction interval obtained through uh, uh, conformalization, uh, this uh, 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 Values uh, uh, converge to, nor to normal distribution, uh, and uh, with this variance, and uh, well, uh, f uh, uh, then z, uh, z again it's a quantile of uh, the uh, normal density. F is the density of the normal distribution. Mu is uh, mean value of uh, input vectors. Uh, sigma capital it's uh, just uh, a matrix of the second moments of our uh, input uh, vectors. It could be proved easily that it's positive. No, this is uh, this technical thing. 
Uh, well, in fact, if you open uh, the paper, I will give you the link. There is a very simple technical explanation. I just forgot that that technical thing, but uh, it's it's almost obvious. So it's. Uh, in fact, here I just uh, uh, in fact here I just uh, plotted uh, the dependence of uh, the dependence of this variance on uh, uh, on the on this epsilon. Uh, no, no, so, uh, it's an asymptotic standard deviation for various significance levels. So you can see that uh, uh, it converges very fast. Uh, so in order to prove that theorem, uh, we uh, show that under our conditions, the uh, conformalized rich regression prediction sets are in fact intervals from some, uh, from some observation. Uh, uh, first, then we simplify some expression for these uh, confident, uh, conformalized risk regression intervals, and then we apply a version of Bahadur representation to obtain that asymptotics I showed you in that theorem. Uh, and uh, the procedure of conformalization can be applied to all kinds of Bayesian methods. In fact, it's a classification algorithm, scalar rich regression, other non parametric Bayesian methods, uh, and we can ask similar questions. Uh, Bayesian assumptions, of course, uh, could be uh, replaced by uh, some other strong assumptions. And uh, there are two sides uh, of program we are, um, we are doing. First of all, it's uh, compare uh, behavior of Bayesian predictions and conf conformalized Bayesian predictions and uh, explore the efficiency on con conformalized Bayesian predictors when Bayesian assumptions are satisfied. Uh, at current moment, uh, we are making a generalization of obtained results to kernel rich regression. It's already made. In fact, we try to make all that results non asymptotic, and uh, we, are, we are working on uh, doing the same for classification and uh, uh, explore some other measure, uh, some other efficiency of, of some other conformal measures. So, well, that's all. Uh, and concerning the uh, concerning the paper, um, uh, initially uh, uh, this algorithm was uh, described here and uh, uh, these results, uh, I mean uh, all the proofs are given here. It's uh, proceedings of cold. Well, that's all. Thank you, Evgeny, and we have a lot of time for questions. Yeah. Вот если вернуться к вопросу Дениса, то все-таки если я взял нулю, то там будет чистый минус. Нет, минус там не получится. Там дело в том, что у вас же здесь стоит ZFC пополам. Sorry, we should we should talk in English. Uh, by the way, so here there is a quantile of normal distribution, and uh, we, uh, since epsilon is uh, tends to zero, then uh, here you will also. Yes, of course, because uh, there will be some non uh, non degenerate limit uh, of this uh, guy when epsilon tends to zero, and this limit in particular is uh, uh, is obtained in that paper. Uh, I uh, have a reference at the last slide. But what you have here, the, this epsilon of f is not dependent of f. Of x, it is dependent of some random n. But in fact, the okay, it could be proved that the, that this guy uh, uh, has uh, the, the the upper bound because it's a matrix of second moments, and uh, this guy uh, has uh, a lower bound which is greater than uh, which is uh, equal to the uh, upper bound for this. Then because of this, this two, this difference isn't uh, isn't uh, negative. But it's not obvious. Yes, it's not obvious. That, that is why I, I gave here the reference to the paper where you can get the technical explanation why why this is true. So uh, again, uh, th there is a lower bound for this, and there is an upper bound for this, uh, which uh, which are tight and equal for all uh, epsilon. Because of this, uh, this is not negative. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, then I have a question. Uh, can you please uh, uh, say in the example uh, with this normal distribution with different uh, means, what was the prime? Uh, so uh, it was also normal. And it was normal, but what was the mean and 
Oh, yeah, as far as I remember, it was like uh, zero and one. Oh, but, so, but, so that's why the posterior. Yes, yes, that's why the posterior is. Uh, and conformalized procedure somehow. Uh, yes, because we, we, we this, that procedure is based on the sample, and it, uh, how to say. Correct. Yes, correct. So that's uh, that are correct assumptions. Thank you. Another question. Okay, then let's speak. Let's speak again. Thank you.